everybody, welcome to iRobot. We're really excited to have you here today. I'm Lisa, I manage the STEM program here at iRobot, and we're gonna do a tour today through our Cool Stuff Museum and learn a little bit about iRobot's history. But in the process, you'll learn about 30 years of robotics history. And that's what makes this so exciting, is that we really were a lot of the genesis for robotics. So we'll be taking you through, and you'll get to learn a little bit about everything that we do here. So behind me, on this wall you can see, it says Mission Driven Builders. That's really who we are here at iRobot. Everything we do comes down to a mission and a purpose. And what we do here is we build. We build the robot, we talk about the robot, and we're doing it so that we can fulfill that mission that we feel is important. Behind me, you can see a lot of different people through time. And when we built out the mural, we really tried to start with who we were at the beginning and where we are today. And at that beginning, we really were our three founders working in their lab at MIT. They formed a company. They slowly grew. They needed some office space. That became maybe a dozen, up to 50 people. And today we're about a thousand people just here in Bedford, Massachusetts, even more worldwide building robots, again, for a specific purpose. So we're gonna go through our history and learn a little bit about what we've done through time. So as the company evolved, like many companies do, we really didn't know where we were starting. You can't really start a company and know that 30 years later, Roomba's gonna be your number one seller and making a difference in the world. So we had to start somewhere. We actually started with toys Toys seemed a logical place to start. We've done some work in remote presence. We did some research robots. We did some defense and security robots working in that industry. We've done some larger robots that you might see at the far end as well. All of that helped us form who we were gonna be. Think about when you start in school. You don't know exactly what you wanna be when you grow up. You have to experiment in a lot of different areas. That's what the company did. Which of the areas were we gonna be successful and what were we gonna find most alluring? So when we first started at iRobot, we actually thought maybe space exploration was the way to go. We were thinking about space as kind of a different way to apply our robotics and to apply some of that knowledge that we had in software. And so our very, very, very first robot is Feature. And Feature is what we call a prototype. Prototype doesn't have to be finished. It doesn't have all the bells and whistles. It doesn't even have to do all the things you think it's gonna do. But that prototype is really meant to express your idea. Again, come back to what we are, mission-driven builders. We always build the robot first. So feature, chopsticks, duct tape, it's even got a ruler back there, it's got some motors. This actually was Colin Engel, our founder's thesis. But feature itself led us to a robot called Genghis. And Genghis is a six-legged walking robot. You can see these legs can move. It's got cameras and bump sensors on the front. It's obviously fairly small. Genghis would be deployed up to the planets, walk around, and bring back the data that we needed. And this is where we thought we were gonna go. The problem was that you can build just so many robots to go up to the planets. You only really do space exploration every so often and you really don't make a lot of money doing it. And so that wasn't the best way for us to use our knowledge. However, we tried a couple other robots. We were building a different array of different prototypes to just try out where could we best use our knowledge. In fact, the robot that you see here on the end is a combination of two robots. This guy right here is called IT. IT is an emotionally responsive robot kind of reacts to how you, it's feeling, what you do with it. It actually really likes light, and so it would smile and react. The bottom is a robot called Ka, and those were arms. So we combined the two, made it a little more socially interactive, just to see what we could do. So here we are prototyping, trying out different things, but the realization was that if we were gonna be a company, we probably needed to make money. So we had to find some industries that were gonna allow us to use that knowledge and make money. So one of the next places we went was the oil industry. This robot 
that you see down the bottom is one of my favorites. This is a section of a robot. It's actually a 32 foot long robot once we put all these sections together. And the robot was intended for the oil industry. It would descend into an oil rig and gather data as it went. The robot was able to determine whether the rig was in oil or water. You never want to be drilling just water. It could do things like temperature, density. It could count how deep it was going. What I find fascinating about this robot, and these are kind of the guts in the interior, it's powered by D-cell batteries. It's copper, beryllium, titanium. It's super light, easy to pick up. They could wrap together the sections of the robot, fly it in by helicopter, have it assembled in about 20 minutes, and be ready to descend into the oil rig. Now, the oil industry evolved into different directions, and so we, again, had to rethink who are we going to be, what are we going to do, and how can we best use our technology. So we'll go around the other side of this pod and take a look at where we went next. <laughs>